Hello, this is Ian Griffiths, and this is the Armed Forces Resettlement In Conversation podcast. Okay, so welcome to the first episode of the Armed Forces Resettlement In Conversation podcast. Um, very excited to welcome my first two guests. The first one is Jack Hughes. He's a scrum master and agile coach from Everyday Agile. And my second guest is John Stevenson, who is the director of the Forces Transition Group. And welcome to the podcast, guys. Welcome. Thank okay. You very much. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, so we'll, we are live in the Facebook group and we're being recorded for the podcast, which is going to be put out later this week. Um, so should we start with Jack? Would you like to go first, Jack? Yeah, thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit on. about your sort of transition from the Royal Navy, when you went in, when you left, and yeah. uh, a little bit more of your story. Uh, yeah, cool. So thanks for having us on, first and foremost. So I joined in 2008, 17 years old, lanky, streak of piss. Not much <laughs> has changed, to be fair. Um, left in 2015, as a, I suppose in, in army speak, it, it was be a corporal, like a leading seaman, so I'd kill it gunner. Um, then step, I went through the FDM route, which some of the people in this group or listening to this podcast might be aware of. Um, they give people a foot into the door of the corporate world. Did my gig with them for two years and then moved on. Started posting content on LinkedIn about three and a half years ago now. Noticed that there wasn't many real stories or people sharing their story. There's loads now, which is great, which I'll move on to in a minute. But at the time, there was no one really sharing their resettlement journey. So I just started sharing snippets. Obviously, it's was was focused on me so it's very generic but um wrote a, i'm gonna call it a pamphlet because i don't think i can call it a book called resettle so it's just again based on my own sort and of that, journey that's, a, that's available on amazon isn't it jack yeah 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 it's like two pounds 75 or something but yeah it, it's just essentially short meat and potatoes advice um but yeah the point is not to plug that but and then set up everyday agile which is a, a small consultancy um but i suppose now going back to that point it's for me it's about promoting other people so when you see people like john um gary matt pasco matthew lewis they're posting relevant up-to-date content that is going to help service leavers yeah. i feel like a bit of a a bit of a football pundit who's been out of the game for 20 years I'm sure Although when, I've got when quite... you said that to me this morning, I kind of sort of related to that. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm going to try and do off the back of that, because I left a long time ago and it might be a bit of stale information. I said the same thing to John when we came on the, on the, on the live just before we, we, we sort of went live into the group. And um, I think what I can do, because I'm a bit of, you know, assault, I left a long time ago, is just get the people who are fresh on the podcast to relay that information and just host basically. Yeah, definitely. I suppose that the benefit of having like John and me and you is the networks are a bit different. So yeah. we've got people who are established in the in city street, but the actual, yeah, there's so much good content out there now from people actually going through it. Yeah. I, I, w I would suggest following those people. Um, does that make, yeah, I don't yeah, know how you feel about that, John. Yeah, like I, I've been watching Gary Rodford for the last, last what, maybe eight months. And I spoke to him at the, the event that all three of us were there, the one that John put on. And I've watched every single step of his journey. And that guy, right, is, I've said it before. I've even said it to his face. Whatever that guy does in his life, he's going to go to the top because he's just so organized and he knows what he wants. He knows how he's going to get there. He gets a setback. He, he, he reevaluates what he's doing makes an, an, a new plan and he just goes with it. And honest to God, I, I just admire him from afar. Yeah, and I, I suppose to play some minute part in those having the confidence to share their story, like, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's good enough for me. And I hope yeah. they continue to inspire 
other people. I don't know what you think about that, John. Yeah, well, <clears throat> Gary Rodford and a couple of the others that you mentioned have, have done it expertly well. Um, for me, however, um, if we did that as, as all service people when they joined, then the bit at the end doesn't need to be like that. So we can do it throughout the service. And, and of course, some of the things I'm going to talk about today yeah. are relevant to that. Yeah. It certainly can be done in the last 24 months. But I would suggest that one of the problems at the minute when people are leaving is because it's left till, till that time. And sometimes it become, can become very difficult with work, work life balances and, and everything that's going on in your head. Yeah. So to get that straight early on is kind of where I'm going. And, and of course, that aligns with the new GSP 100. That's the holistic approach to the transition. Um, and, that, and, and that's what I want to affect earlier rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly, Gary Rodford's done a fantastic job, proving proven if you do it right, it, it can be done very, very well. Yeah, well, like, 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 like Jack said, there's three people who sort of stand out. It's Gary, Lewis Matthews, and um, Matt Pasco as well. You know, those three guys, um, they, they're doing it the right way, aren't they? You know, and, and, and what I've noticed from those guys is they're not sort of, they're not putting their resettlement off on anyone else. And it, yeah. they're, they're taking responsibility for it and owning their, basically they're owning their own shit. They're going, right, this is mine. I can either do it and make a success of it, or I can just leave it till the end and do what I did. And I ended up in Tesco's because I didn't do anything. I, I, I thought I knew it all. And, and ownership, ownership and direction, Ian's massive. That's it. The problem is we're talking about three or four people. Yeah. There's 15,000 people leaving every year. Yeah, We're yeah. there. So yes, some people are doing it well, but what about all the people that aren't doing it well? Yeah. That's, that, that has to change and it has to become more visible because yeah. then more people can help them. Yeah, sure. Um, so have you got anything to add to um, what John said there, Jack? Or should we just get um, straight into John's presentation? I know he wants to share his screen and stuff like that. No, no, yeah, no. Happy. Yeah. Do you want to go straight in then, John? And um, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll jump on. Can you just um, disable the, the host for me, please? Ian. Sorry, how do we do that, John? What do we do? If you just click on, I think if you just click on my name, it should allow you to give me the host. Then you can take it back. Make host, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to explain for people who are listening on the podcast, which is audio only, that John is going to do a presentation. So you're not going to be able to see the slides, obviously, because you're listening to it on audio. So if you do want to see the presentation, it will be available in the British Armed Forces Resettlement Community Facebook group. And it will also be on the YouTube channel available for you to watch visually as well as orderly. So, yeah, uh, no further ado. Go ahead, John. Okay, thanks very much, um, Ian. <clears throat> um, my name's John Stevenson. I'm the, the Director of Forces Transition Group. And we've been going about nine months. This is the actually the first time I have shown um, this presentation. Uh, even Jack and Ian haven't seen this yet. And it's kind of the direction that I'm starting to go in now, which in theory predates everything that happens before you leave. So I'm not really interested um, in, in competition with or being in parallel with CTP or anything like that. What I would like to do, obviously I will help everybody at the end now because it's current, but in the future it should be helping all of the people way, way before they reach the end of service. So because everybody can't see this, um, and I'm just going to move the, the pictures on my screen. Um, the mission um, for us, which, which, which I don't really like to, to, to kind of um, talk out, but because there's, there's some no viewing on here, is to provide a unique program of personal and professional development activities and services for armed forces personnel that will enhance their potential in service, but also prepare them for the experience of resettlement an onward transition into a successful civilian career. So that's to serve well, leave well, and then flourish. 
this, uh, the Forces Transition Group has largely been um, doing a lot of work with the Veterans Transition Review from 2014, which was published by Lord Ashcroft, which he states experience has shown that improving the education and skills of service personnel, thus increasing their chances of a good transition, has the effect of encouraging them to stay rather than a cause a rush to the gates, so retention. Being more confident about their security, they know they'll be marketable whenever they leave and are therefore in less of a hurry to do so. So this is all about when people say, if you, if you um, give people too much professional development, if you introduce them to people outside of the forces, will leave. Well, actually, there's nothing further from the truth. So who are we, the Forces Transition Group? So we've been formed and we form part of the Insure Life Group. We provide unique programs, which Jack um, and Ian and many other people have been on, and try to engage in, in getting people a much better professional development. And when we talk about professional development, quality professional development, that's current, that's new, that's out there, that's in civilian street, but also looking at things that are, are absolutely critical for when you leave, like CVs and networks. Nobody does that during their time served, thus they don't do professional development that way. However, a priority when leaving is a CV and a network, because if you haven't got either, you can't find a job. We enhance potential in service and, and in the resettlement in the future, so by by enhancing the professional development, by allowing people to develop whilst they're in service and making it common, people then get them qualifications, get their CVs written, and um, grow their networks, which allows them to, when they hit the future, um, to have massive, massive experience in it. We capture opportunities like I've just spoke about while serving with free courses and, and, and the good stuff that Jack's doing in Agile and Scrum. That we'll be way better prepared throughout rather than the end of service, which I've alluded to. And financially, we talk about social um, mobility. So what will happen on, on barracks right now is you'll get a company coming in who will basically just um, come on and try and sell a cookhouse policy. It's way more in depth than that. It goes all the way back into before you joined the forces. Where do people come from? People come from disadvantaged background, backgrounds, deprived backgrounds. So they haven't had a financial upbringing. If you don't give them that once they're serving, that's why people don't tend to invest, don't, test, don't tend to buy the right policies, don't tend to have a house when they leave. Emotionally, when you leave, this is a huge thing that nobody talks about. And to um, make sure that you are professionally educated, not just personally educated towards your career. We kind of start to form this, this ring, this ring of um, steel, if you like. So it's all about mentorship mindset from people like Ian Jack, owning your future. If you've got a good financial plan, not being in debt and owning your own home before you leave is a massive thing, but nobody does it. Two biggest things, networks and CVs, massive for when you leave. Well-being, the emotional part, and of course, which, which, which comes all around that is the direction in which, which you're, going to, you're going through or going to, which will be a lot of people's kind of feelings on here as well. They don't quite know where they fit in. They don't quite know where their skill set sits. So we can help with all of that. So understanding the transition resettlement and the future, to do that, we've got to understand the realities of transition resettlement. To understand the realities, we have to be through it. So unless you've served, unless you've been through resettlement and been on the other side for a period of time, you do not understand all three. So really, in many ways, you can't comment too much on it. And that's what we're trying to do by using quality people and mentors. To give that, you've got to be an expert by qualification and have all three. And we do this by uh, aligning ourselves with the support and, uh, by supporting the Defence Holistic Transition, Transition Policy, which was written in 2019 and is JSP 100. And you can Google that if you want a, a good 80 page read. Okay, we'll, we, will, we will allow the life skills that you've learned to be understood and then turned into what is great for when you get out there, okay, through professional development, through your career and understanding it early, because there's a need for this. And of course, by doing all of these things, it then creates that ownership and direction that everybody needs. Again, go through the ring of steel, which kind of cements all of that. So 
more stuff or, or more kind of quotes from the transition review in 2014, the armed forces offer what amounts to Britain's biggest and best apprenticeship scheme. Moreover, no other institution does so much directly to promote merit-based social mobility on such a large scale. Recruits who often come from difficult backgrounds in deprived areas are equipped for extraordinary lives and careers. So what I'm saying is, if you haven't been given direction, ownership, um, you haven't been uh, educated in finance, then why would you ever know when you joined if nobody ever tells you how to do this? And this is what the Forces Transition Group want to do and aid all of the great stuff that's already there throughout your service. So what do we offer? Opportunity and education through maybe courses, through mentors, through free courses, through when you're leaving job opportunities with quality people, not just veterans, but business people. Mentorship, we have already got over 100 people signed up as mentors, some veterans, some in business who've never served, given a different point of view. Roadshows, we um, carry out one day and two day roadshows throughout units throughout the UK. We want to make this compulsory. We create pathways to success. We don't tell you how to do it. We kind of try to um, aid you with that direction, with that ownership and different skills, different ways to do this, which gives you a better idea at the end of where you're going. We will offer investment, pension. Nobody understands a pension. We will give you a different side of pension in which we look at how much money maybe you would lose if you got out of the 12 point, 12 year point compared to the 22 year point and what that means for you over your life. We will look at your financial guidance and education and we will give you a well-being coaching approach. This is not telling you how to do it. This is trying to aid you in which way is best to do it for you. So choose your future. The JSP 100 states that full implementation of transition policy will assist in enabling better recruitment and retention for the armed forces. And I believe that true. It will enable a great awareness among service personnel of the rigors and demands of civilian life, the implication for their family and the planning and preparations that, need, uh, that, that needs to be made for it. It will improve the public perception of service personnel and veterans as we will be better prepared where we will better prepare our service personnel and their families for the inevitable journey back into civilian life. Because one day this is going to happen. No matter what, the day you join, one day you will leave and you should start preparing from that time. How do we do it? Through workshops, unit webinars, coffee mornings. We're looking at the future so that people are serving, the transition, that year, then two years as you leave, the gap in growth, veterans being able to drop back in when they find they need something, maybe a job or maybe um, just a bit of financial education or maybe a CV and then grow again. We're trying to do this once a week throughout the UK on barracks, twice if we can. We bring veterans, mentors, and we're going to bring all of that as we start to scale up onto units and into things like this, which, you know, lots of people will be involved like Gary, like Jack, like Ian. And then we follow up one-to-one, -one, making sure these people get quality as they go through their life. Questions we get asked, are you not duplicating CTP? Absolutely not. We predate CTP. What I would like to do is grow or build the house CTP can put the roof on because then it will be understood better and we, people will probably get lots more out of it. Do people really think about transition during service? Yes and no, but because it's not there at the minute, Nobody thinks about it, or very few people do. By making it the norm, breakfast at seven, PTs at eight, best do some professional development. Maybe if it's out there, people will do this better. So um, I'm not saying an 18 year old will want to professionally develop, but when he's 21, he might, if this is the norm. Will this encourage people to leave? I don't think so, and neither does the JSP. Actually, if you manage people correctly, develop them correctly and they can see that the future is way better by having a longer service and they have more skills, leadership, management, more qualifications and experience, they will go into civilian street in a much better place. Who funds this? I fund this, we fund this through the Insure Life Group, through insurance, has to be funded somehow. 
Are we just selling insurance? Absolutely not. We're doing this to the best ability for each person out there. Um, insurance is one thing. Pensions is another. Investment is another. And people need to be educated on this because getting a cook house policy in 10 minutes is not good practice. How can you benefit from this? Benefit from this. You can benefit in many ways. Free courses, job opportunity, free CVs, speaking to mentors, really starting to own your future. So how can we help you now? We could do a CV rewrite or a CV, a CV first rate and LinkedIn profile match. Massively, massively important all through your career. And at the end, this is free. Um, we give a financial education and one-to-one -one expertise for life. So no matter what, whether you want to be part of us, we will give you recommendation and advice for life. You can drop back into us when you need. We give you mentorship through hundreds and, and, and hopefully thousands of veterans and business in the future. We help you with your performance, mindset and attitude by webinars, by, by being on barracks with quality people coming along for the ride. It's not just everything in the, in the word of John Stephenson, which will give you your direction and ownership for the future. And we'll also aid in your professional development and the job opportunity with some personal and family well-being as you're going through that. So achievements so far in the last kind of eight months, the CV to interview, it states 85% success rate there, but however, a survey suggests in the last week that this is now at 96%, so people actually making it to um, some kind of interview. Financial saves and understood is in 65% of cases now, and we've dealt with over 500 people. Over 100 confirmed mentors and business and veterans that we can put you in touch that create jobs, create opportunity. Um, job success at the minute from our interviews is about four per week, but we think it's higher, but everybody doesn't report back in. 10% of people re-engage with what we do because they've got no plan. And I'm sure Ian and Jack will be aware of that when we, we talk about plans a lot on our um, presentations. Over 500 free courses already produced and 1,800 CVs written in six months, one-to-one. -one. Every single one of them has had a one-to-one a, a -one -one with me, whether it's been on barracks or via Zoom during this COVID-19 piece. So if you need to get in touch with me, that's my number. And also that's my email address. So if you need any of that, then please feel free to ping, ping um, an email into me and then we can kind of start going with the process and, and really start helping you guys out. But um, Ian, thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing that now. Right, John. Yeah. Can you just, um, for, the, for the benefit of the people um, listening on audio only, can you just tell them your, the Forces Transition Group number and email address, if that's all right? Yeah, it's John at forces transition group dot co dot uk you can find our websites and all of our numbers and things like that on www dot forces transition group dot co dot uk brilliant my okay. phone so number is zero seven eight two five eight three four five zero nine and we'll respond to anybody and have that first initial conversation Okay. Yeah. Well, brilliant. And I just, just to add to this as well, cause I know you're not on Facebook, John, but whenever there's going to be a forces transition group, um, there a seminar, a road show, I guess, aren't they? The, do you call them a road show, John? Yeah. Road shows, I've, yeah. I've been to one. I was, I was due to go to another couple of them, but because of lockdown, um, they, they, they were postponed. So, um, whenever there is one and John lets me know about it, I'll create an event within the, the Facebook group. Um, so people can see what's going on in a description. And if they want to go along and see you in person, then that's great as well, yeah. Um, really enjoyed that presentation, John. I'm sure people get, get a lot from it. Um, so yeah, just right. So I've got four questions from people within the Facebook group that I've gathered over the last few days. Um, and I think some of them will be relevant to John and I think a couple of them might be able to be um, answered by Jack as well. So the first one is, from Karen, and do it, it, the question is, do we have a list of employers that guarantee or prefer to interview veterans? 
John, I've got I've got more of an opinion more than a. Thought. All right, yeah, go on, yeah. So, are you happy, Jack? If I answer first. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that the Forces Transition Group are working on is a is what's called the Forces Transition Group Job Spot, in which okay. we employ ex forces to become recruiters who understand service personnel. Yeah. We're just working on two big companies now who will give us the plethora of job roles who want service people. Well, I know Amazon Amazon are a big advocate of, of, of um, you know, taking on military personnel. Yeah. So Amazon are a great one to go through, but of course you've got to make their stipulation and, and you know, it's worth chatting that through. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's plenty of companies out there, yeah. um, but we're trying to define it or refine it so that there's more success from it. It's very sporadic at the minute. Yeah. Um, and that does need to change. One of the issues is um, the job hopping. A lot, of, a lot of companies who started doing this through the Covenant, Covenant yeah. also get high recruitment fees. Okay. So they take a service person on, but the person leaves after a month. So it kind of turns people off a little bit. Yeah. Certainly anybody that wants to get in touch with me, I can introduce them to lots of people and we can talk through... Um, employers who are pro um, military if you like yeah absolutely well maybe, maybe i might try and sort of um, get get someone from amazon on the podcast in the mm -hmm. next couple of months and see if i can sort of uh, get their take on what their stipulations are for well, amazon at the minute are taking many many service personnel i don't think gary um, rodford's gone hasn't he to amazon he has so you've yeah, got to have you Potentially, you've got to have different levels of just um, of, of leadership and management. Yeah. But there's all different levels of jobs also. And they're yeah, very, true. very pro forces. And actually, um, I, you know, I don't know enough about them to know what it's like working inside, but the, the feedback is fantastic. Perfect. Well, uh, yeah, brilliant. Thanks for answering that, John. So, um, Jack, is this a controversial <laughs> opinion, is it? Guessing no, it's not. Con I don't think it's controversial. I just think it's uh, you have to be careful with expect ex sorry yeah. ex expectations of other yeah. people you know john riley points out and i know everyone knows the figures fifteen thousand people leave each year yeah but the, the, but you you are not like if you think of that as the x forces market and all the the normal people the civvies looking for jobs as well you yeah. are not special in that in that sort of way no one really cares in the corporate world, yeah, I how think many medals right you've got? On your, I and, think and, and, presentations that I've seen, uh, both, uh, I think it was the one at John's event actually, and you actually said, you know, civvies don't care whether you've been in the military. You, you could be quite a bit of a hindrance, to be fair, if you start. Yeah, and it's not, it's not. I'm not trying to be negative about it, but it's just, have, it's just having that practical realism that yeah. you are. If you think you're a number in the forces. You know, the amount of people who have got that little open to work thing on LinkedIn at the moment, you know, you, you have to you have to stand out that tiny bit more. Just being in the forces at the moment is not always going to get you no. through the door. You have to sort of, what else you've got? You can't just rely on that. Again, I learned that first. Well, I, I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's controversial. It's just no, it's reality. It's it reality. comes back to well, it is reality. It comes back to ownership and direction again. Jim. Absolutely, yeah. Because if yeah. that if that is fed into you through your your service career, that you need to be dipping your toe in the water for the next side, so you really understand it. You won't have that um, theory. You yeah. will understand yeah. that it's 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 going it's going to be like this. So I need to. Um, own this and I need to get my direction sorted so that I fit into them areas and them places. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I try and describe it as, you know, when you go to a restaurant, you don't order, you rarely order what's not on the menu, right? <laughs> because the chefs think it's a pain in the ass. So you have to show people what's on the menu because they're not just going to come to you. Recruiters have got a hard enough job as it is. You have to sort of, get their eyes onto you through the, the stuff that you put out. And that's why people like Gary, Matthew um, and Lewis are doing so well because the people are going to them now. Yeah. They're not just sitting there and expecting stuff. Well, people even to... people like you and I who left ages ago, we know about them guys and we're not even recruiters. We're just like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? And we know about them. So, you know, if I was a recruiter and I seen any one of those guys, I'd be interested in talking to yeah. them. I would. Absolutely.
Um, right, the, problem, the problem with recruiters, though, Ian, is it's it can become very impersonal. So when you're going through recruiters, once you've had your kind of first half an hour or hour, yeah, you, you could very, very quickly become just another number to them. Like a barcode sort of thing. So you've got to keep them honest. There's some good ones and there's some <coughs> bad ones. Yeah. But by keeping them honest and keeping them on the toes and phoning them up, yeah. keeps you in the limelight. Because yeah. if they have 100 calls a week and you were the first call, they're never remembering who you are by the end of the week. Yeah, but if they have 100 calls a week and 10 of them are off you. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Keep in their face well, and a, keep, keep them pretty, honest. Yeah, I'm a pretty persistent person. That, that's my sort of vibe. And, you know, I think sometimes that gets you a long way, doesn't it? If you, you are persistent and you're in people's faces. Um, so, yeah I, yeah, I think that's answered that question from, from a whole different, you know, a few different angles, really. Um, so the next question is from a lady called Cheryl in the Facebook group. And um, her question is, what is the score for funding for going to university after leaving? Now, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm not sure. I asked John earlier. I'm not sure he, he's up on this. Uh, Do you know anything about it, Jack? I know, it, I know it's a thing. I know, I know, I don't know. There's a guy, isn't there? Was it Mills Hills or Miles Hills? Oh, yeah, Mills uh, Hills, yeah. Well, he, he wants... He's, uh, he's, he's always going on about it, but I, I know it's there. I think, like all these things, I imagine you have to go through a lot of pay... And jump through a lot of hoops to get it. Mm. Um, again, Gary, Gary mentioned it. Gary yeah, I've seen on that, yeah. he, uh, But personally, no, it's not. I don't know. Right, okay. Well, maybe I'll follow up on that question with a post in the Facebook group after, you know, in a, in a day or two once I've got the answer up, either Mills or Gary. Um, right, so this is a good one. And I know, I know Jody's watching live now in the Facebook group. So hi, Jody. Um, she's been waiting for this live to come, come around. So Jody is struggling to know what kind of jobs to go for. And she's putting off shirt searching. And the reason she is, is because she's confused by the choice that's out there. This, this comes back to direction. Yeah. So some work's got to be done in really sitting down and working out where you think you're best, what you enjoy the most. Yeah. What you get there, you know, what, what, if you wake up in the morning and you're going to enjoy your work, where would that be? Yeah. And you've got to start getting them strands right because there is thousands and thousands of jobs out there. But again, it comes back to all the way back to service and, and understanding what direction you're going, going through by um, completing the CV every year, by, by uh, understanding your life skills, your hard, your soft skills, because what then starts to develop is where you're best. Now, yeah. I've got no problem with, with sitting down and discussing that um, yeah. and going through uh, well, where all of the, the, the best skills are. But I, but I do understand the question, and we get that a lot. For example, people will say, um, I want to go into, I'm going to be a project manager. Well, the problem with that is project management in what? Yeah, yeah, I and see that a lot. So, so, so we, and that happens with everything. If you want to go in HR, HR in what? Yeah. It's kind and of, we've got to kind of, kind of pinpoint where you want to be, where, yeah. you, where you're going to enjoy working, and then kind of start a network in them areas and start to kind of have them discussions. Yeah, it's, it's kind of finding the subcategory of the category that you want to work in. So if it is HR that you're interested in, is it learning and development? Is it employment law? Yeah. Is it, do you know what I mean? Which, which subcategory within HR do you want to work in? Um, mm. And well, what I'm going to do as well, if you don't mind, John, because I know Jody put a comment on there as well that she just sort of... Um, She's a little bit sort of lacking direction. So away from the, uh, from the podcast and the live on Facebook, I, I, I'll send Jody your, your details over on a DM and, and put you guys in touch because uh, I think she'll benefit from the Forces Transition Group massively. I think, it's about, I think it's about understanding that, again, I don't know who this individual is, so yeah. I don't want to offend her, but I'm going to give... I'm going to take Jodie out of the equation. I'm going to call someone Brenda, and she's yeah. 40 years old, and yeah. she's done 22 years in the army, right? You know, Brenda's got another 25 years in her, probably, which then if you if you do that, that could potentially be five, uh, four more careers, yeah. five more careers. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, if you do something for three years, there's nothing really stopping you from 
changing your mind. I don't get bogged down with on, on the other angle, I suppose. Don't get too bogged down with niching down too much. Yeah, yeah. Because you've still got three or four careers left in you. Yeah. Think how many think how many times you've chopped and changed in the forces. You know, you yeah. could you probably had like three or four different careers in that time. So you could go into HR and manage a project and think oh, I actually quite like that quite like that part of it and then go into project management or yeah, kind of like branch you know, changing isn't it but for civvies yeah like, and once yeah. once you get into a, a massive you know a, a nationwide building society or Lloyd's Bank yeah it's yeah. so easy to, to chop and change between branches if you like or yeah. you could be places. a mortgage advisor or you could do this or you yeah I like, you see it all the time people chopping and changing once you're in somewhere which is obviously the difficult bit yeah. It's quite easy to sidestep. So yeah, but don't get too bogged down and niche in. Yeah, because that can you can kind of, change your mind. It can kind of blink at you that as well and take your sort of mojo away whilst you you know taking your sort of your your vision away from what you know what the goal you're trying to do because you're worrying about so many different aspects of what ifs if that makes sense. So you're like, what if this happens? What if that happens? Just yeah, and, of, to be, and Kendo. Simon Kendrick just put something in the comments about entrepreneurship. Like, what, what, what? You know, why not set up on your own if you've got yeah the motivation to do that? Yeah, I mean, from an ent- entrepreneur sort of, um, I don't really like the word, but you know, I could probably put yeah. myself in that category. Um, it's not for everyone, but once you get into the role of uh, and you start making sort of waves within running your own business, it becomes an. For me. My, I, I earn money off what I love doing. So getting up in the morning, there's no problems. Do you know what I mean? And if I have to work an 18 hour day, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm enjoying what I do. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's quite important as well. So if you, I mean, if anyone does want to talk about setting their own business up and stuff like that, I'm not sort of Bill Gates or, you know, Richard Branson, but I do know the basics of setting up. So I'd be happy to sort of, you know, point people in the right direction that way as well, you know, so, um, right. But to answer, but answer that question though, in, in, in a one as just get in touch and we'll make a plan. Yeah. Let's make you, some, yeah. Once you start writing it down, it might become easier to see. Yeah. 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 Make a plan. Yeah. That's, that, that sort of, yeah. That, that's the first thing you need to do, isn't it? Yeah. So right. The last Question is from a guy called Stuart, and he is struggling to get to interview and looking at using his ELCs, but for what? And I think this is, you know, I think this is just, I know where this one's going to go. It's probably just to phone you, John. (laughs) So he's looking to use his ELCs, but he doesn't know what for, and he's struggling to get to interview. Now, I, I, I didn't really, I couldn't really... The comments, I, I might have taken it out of context. I don't know how it was really written, but they're the exact words that were written on the comment. Well, if you're struggling to get to interview, could be for many different reasons, but in general, forces leave us, struggle to get interview because they fall foul of the ATS, the applicant tracking system. Okay. 80% of companies are using it. So if your CV does not match the job spec, then you yeah. get an automated reply from a computer telling you you haven't been um, successful for interview. Now, one of the things we do and why we've got such a high percentage on a success to interview is because we work through that with what's called Tag Crowd and um, we form a different kind of CV in which we humanize you and then sell your story with fact and figure. And alongside the words they need, also the first person that has that eight second to 20 second glance at your CV, then will put you in the small pile. The more small piles you can get in, the more chance you're going to interview, the more chance you've got of winning one of them races. Yeah. That's what we do. And the success rate is is huge. Perfect. So if you want, if you need your CV looking at, Absolutely, I can do that well, that's, by that's tomorrow. Where, that's where it's going to start with that question, I think. And if, if they're looking to, I, you know, I see a lot of companies, you know, um, I'm not going to name any, but I see a lot of companies sort of saying, spend your ELCs on this, spend your ELCs on that. And some of them, I'm not saying all, well, you know, a small percentage of them, I kind of look at them and think, 
you're just after the ELC money. Uh, yeah, so got, I got ripped apart for that the other day. Like someone, you what's know, for saying that. But yeah, just for pointing out that not all companies have got your best interest at heart. Like well, it's yeah. a fact. Well, yeah, it is a fact. Yeah, um, I, I'm not there's, scared, man, there's, only, there's only so many locksmith courses out there that people. That's it. You know. And I think a lot of them, right? And I'm going to be really controversial here now, but it's my podcast, so I can. Um, I I see a lot of them that, um, and they know that the core. How, how much you get for the LCs? Is it two and a half grand per course or something like that? Yeah, it? with with a five hundred pound contribution, you. Yeah, and lo and behold, the course is two four nine nine. There's <laughs> and you know, but Ian, we're coming back to the same old thing, aren't we? Yeah. Why are we not doing this whilst we're serving? Yeah. Why are we waiting yeah. till the end? Yeah. You know, why not sit on, or why, you know, with Jack, if I was going to do Agile and Scrum, I'd be doing that through my career. Yeah. And using the best of my ability while serving. Yeah. Because then I can gain loads of experience in it. Yes, yeah. do it at the end if it comes to that. However, I would have much preferred to know about Jack during my service. And then he could have took me through that and I could have used it to enhance my career. Yeah, well, it's also the same, say, if somebody wanted to buy a marquee hire franchise off me and they wanted to secure, I don't know, say if they wanted to open up in Plymouth and they wanted that post-coded area, but they were only leaving the armed forces in three years, I'd be quite happy to take a deposit off them for that area and then train them up over the three years and then let them get cracking then. That's called Obviously. investment, though, and nobody wants to do that because they don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. So there's just got to be that sort of education throughout, I feel. And, you know, yeah. you're going to Parliament, are you, John? Or you're nearly there? Well, that, that's where I aim to go. Yeah. So if that Brilliant. happens, I hope it does. I just believe that we can change a lot of lives, make a, a big difference well, mate, about service, which is an amazing, amazing thing and, there, and should be enjoyed. Yeah. But I think we can get a lot more out of it while serving it for the end. Yeah, definitely. Well, if you get there, John, I'll drop you off outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, right, has anyone got anything else to add they want to sort of add towards the end of this? I'm really pleased with the way it was going. I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit nervous before I came on. You two, you guys have made it really easy for me, I think, because we're friends away from this setting. Anyway, made it pretty easy for me. Um, but, yeah, has anyone got any, anything they'd like to add at the end? Big Simon Kendrick's looking for a looking for a podcast slot. Yeah, I, well, he, I, I've already. Yeah, I think he can come on anyway. You know, I, more and merrier. What I want to do, what I'm, this is the way that the podcast is going to go now, and I'll just I'll just lay it out right at the end. Is I'm going to get people like yourselves on who help people who are leaving. Yeah, I'm going to get people who are in the process of leaving towards the end, like the likes of Gary Rod, and I'm going to offer, ask him to, uh, and maybe Lewis and. And, and Matt, so it's fresh people who are going through that now. And then I'm also going to try and get employers to come on um, to, you know, the likes of Amazon. I'd love to get someone from there on just to sort of talk about what they can offer to service leavers as well. I'm going to get people from all different angles on the podcast and deliver it into this. Absolutely. Group. And hopefully I can help some people out. That's all I want to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Could you, could you put my, um, just my email address in on, on the actual Facebook on the video yeah i will do i'm going to pin it to the top of the group anyway yeah and if anybody wants any information about the two guys that have been on here um i'll post their linkedin uh, profiles again on the video as well um and if you want to ask me that's fine so yeah thanks guys for coming on to the armed forces resettlement in conversation first episode um this podcast is sponsored by the party tank company franchising limited and I will be back next week with a fresh guest called Tim Jones. Thanks, guys.